so here's the chart for the asset, right? So it was right here on this day. Um, this was a reversal day on positive news, right? So I get short the close there with a stop against that day's high. And I just kind of sit short from there. And you can look at the date of that was January 25th, right? Mm -hmm. And the date of this, you know, this was January 17th. So starting the 17th, I'm looking for where to get short. As it turned out, it was the 25th where I actually got short. And that's kind of how I use the um, the COT. And there's obviously COT for, you know, all this stuff, energies, equities, you know. You can see the NASDAQ. This is where we were getting long NASDAQ, right? Mm -hmm. Which was early January. You're seeing the speculators getting super short. You're seeing the commercials get super long. I'm looking for a news failure, which there were many of during January in in, in the Nasdaq. But the first one I take and and I get long, and and that's that's kind of how I use it. So in other words, speculators getting super short, market not going down as they expect on certain news. I get long. So just to, just to ask some clarifying questions, you're looking for you know a big divergence in what the different groups of people are doing. And then looking for, you know, to really get extreme. So what, what kind of qualifies as extreme positioning uh, for you? So that's a good question because how do you determine extreme? Um, and the way that I've done it is it, I turn this data into an oscillator in my system. Mm -hmm. And when the oscillator, you know, is over 95, I'm looking to buy. And when the oscillator is, you know, below five, I'm looking to sell. Gotcha. So you have to pick a period of time for that oscillator. You know, is it one year? Is it six months? Is it three years? You know, and there's a little bit of um, art there, a little bit of art there. And, you know, you can back test it, which is always very dangerous, you know. So this is where sort of I will use a little bit of discretion in particular when it comes to things like hedging the portfolio. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm super long risk and I have a few things that maybe aren't showing me that they're, at, you know, below five on my oscillator. Maybe my oscillator is eight. You know what I mean? But I get a news failure. Well, then I'll short it anyway, because I'm not going to count on my oscillator as being so accurate, because that's a moving target. But I'm not going to short it if the oscillator is at 50, but you know, mm -hmm. it's a few points off of where I need it to be, and I'm getting a news failure, and I need something to hedge my portfolio, then I will use some discretion on that and, and, and go for it. Yeah, makes sense. And could we actually go over what you were looking at to go long NASDAQ uh, into this year? I, I think that'd be interesting for people to see, both looking at the COT as well as looking at the chart in FIVIS. So, I mean, this was it right here, you know? Yep. Um, it was here because we have the advantage of seeing what happened afterwards. But yeah. in live time, when you get here, right, this is when I was looking to do it. So this was January 10th, because at that time, this was looking very much like the commercials were getting very long, which means the speculators are getting very short, right? Mm -hmm. As it turned out, as the market went up, speculators sold more. You know, yeah. that's kind of unusual, but it was great because that's what helped. But so I'm looking to get long, you know, on, 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 on Jan starting January 10th mm -hmm. um, is when I was looking to get long NASDAQ. And then I don't remember exactly what the news failure event was on that after january 10th yeah it was that cpi reading yeah it's probably this one right here yep. right yep yep that cpi reading so you can see it hopefully that the market went down closed mm -hmm. up and i get long there versus that low and and i just ride it and what's kind of your methodology for exiting a position so this is kind of how you enter but what, what do you how do you decide when to sell so again it's all based on the same thing if i'm getting in because speculators are super short and that's what my edge is, right? Mm -hmm. That they're going to have to cover, get squeezed and get out. Once they are not super short anymore, I just take my profit. So when my oscillator goes to 50, I take my profit. Gotcha. And yeah. people are like, well, why don't you wait until they get super long? And it's like, well, I could, but that's my, I don't know that they're going to do that. You know what I mean? Like that's what my edge is, right? So I just trade my edge and get out. Does that mean the market can't continue higher after I get out? doesn't mean that at all. The market might continue higher, but it'll just continue higher without me. You know, I take my piece and other people can take their piece. You know, at that point, trend followers and momentum traders will come in and they can ride that. That's their job. Right. My job is sort of being the turn picker. You're focusing on your zone of excellence, what you've studied and, and have done for years. Yeah. That's it. I do my thing and other people do their thing and, and we can all be happy.